I'm Joe Smith. Get ready for 10 minutes of top stories. This is 10 at 10. This is breaking news. Good afternoon. I'm Joe Smith live in the KGW newsroom. We're tracking the latest in the search for seven year old Kyron Horman. And good morning. I'm Joe Smith. We're following some breaking news on the Oregon coast. We have live team coverage. Here's some uh, tape from earlier this morning at about 915 and there's the second slide where this tree just comes crashing down. Tell us how this works now as far as uh, the cleanup is concerned. Breaking news. The jury has reached a decision. We are now just moments away from learning the fate of Bruce and Joshua Turnage. Will it be the death sentence? Let's get right to News Channel 8's Randy Neves on the phone from the Marion County Courthouse. Randy, what's the latest? All right, there you have the very latest on the investigation uh, in the search for Kyron Horman. And uh, as Captain Jason uh, Gates uh, mentioned, they are doing a second canvas of uh, the parents, teachers, and students uh, from Skyline. They are sending out uh, this particular flyer with a questionnaire, hoping that they, if they saw or remember anything, uh, that this flyer will jog their memory. They can fill out the form, and then, of course, the authorities will take it from there. Tonight, there is a new tool for the search for the missing seven-year-old Kyron Horman. The boy's family made a virtual wall of hope. The night team's Mike Benner is live in downtown Portland to explain. Mike? Go back to you in the studio. Mike, thank you. Here's some video just into our newsroom. Firefighters are mopping up a fire at the Jolly Roger Tavern on Southwest Kelly Avenue in Portland. Patrons say the fire started in an upstairs apartment unit. The fire was contained to one unit, but others suffered smoke damage. One person was treated for minor injuries. New at 11, Mayor Sam Adams and Portland Police Chief Michael Reese take to the streets to help launch a new community patrol. The goal, to prevent attacks on members of the gay community. The Q Patrol hit the streets about an hour ago at the Red Cap Garage on Southwest Stark Street. In addition to discouraging crime, the patrol is handing out public safety information. And we have uh, a lot of people coming into downtown Portland. The volunteers plan to patrol in the downtown and Old Town areas every Friday and Saturday night through October. Covering Washington County, police in Tigard say it's among the rarest crimes they see. A stranger on stranger sexual assault in the middle of the day. But it happened just before 4 p.m. on August 6th last Friday at an apartment complex on Tigard Street near 105th Avenue. Today, a sketch was released showing the suspect, a Hispanic man who has a distinctive scar on his left eyebrow. The unit working pretty much nonstop. Tiger police have a tip line at 503-718-2677. A consumer alert tonight, door-to-door -door magazine subscription scams are making a comeback with a rise in complaints. Oregon's attorney general says most of the reports are tied to a group called Atlantic Circulation. Like other scams, it involves door-to-door -door salespeople, usually young adults claiming the money goes to help charities. 150 complaints have been fielded in the past year alone. The best advice is not to open the door if you feel uncomfortable. The heat will be turned up high this weekend. People were doing what they could to keep cool today, and we should expect more of the same. At the Clark County Fair today, one of the most popular attractions was not the rides, it was the misters. Crews also set up huge fans to keep both the crowds and animals cool. Meals on Wheels volunteers also added fans to their daily deliveries. Some of them wouldn't have a fan if it wasn't for us, and they for the pets, the Oregon Humane Society plans to keep its cooling center open during regular business hours as long as temperatures stay in the 90s. Rod Hill is in for Matt Safino tonight in the First Alert Storm Center, and he joins us early with a look at how hot it will get tomorrow and any chance we'll push into the triple digits? A possibility. All righty. Thank you, Rod. Well, it seems like an easy thing to watch out for, but when the heat rises, so do the number of cases of children falling from open windows. Today, a local family shared their story in hopes it will help others. Their four-year-old son fell from a second-story window back in June. His injuries were so serious, he's only now being released from the hospital. His mother told us what she was thinking as she ran to rescue her child. I couldn't imagine um, on the way to um, the, the ground. Dornbecker Children's Hospital urges families to take preventive measures by installing window guards to protect children from falls. Four families are having to sleep elsewhere tonight after a fire ripped through their apartment building. It started around 1.30 at Northeast 162nd and Halsey in Gresham. 
It took nearly an hour for firefighters to get this under control. Extra crews were brought in to keep firefighters from suffering heat exhaustion. The fire started in an upstairs unit. Everyone made it out without any serious injuries. The Red Cross is assisting tonight. Portland police say no one is at fault in a crash involving a TriMet bus that sent a bicyclist to the hospital. As a result, no one will be cited for last night's crash at Southwest 6th and Morrison at the downtown transit mall. 36-year-old Richard Krebs suffered a leg injury. He's in fair condition. The bus driver's name has not been released. Many in the biking community say the lanes for buses, max, cars and bikes can be confusing. The search is on for a person of interest in a bomb blast that damaged several homes in Kelso this week. Kevin Powell was arrested in Longview on unrelated warrants. Police believe he may have something to do with a bomb that damaged three homes early Tuesday morning. No one was hurt, but several windows were broken and damage was done to some siding. Covering Clackamas County, the Sheriff's Department and its employment practices will be put under the microscope after several recent crimes by deputies. The most high profile came early this year when Sergeant Jeffrey Grand murdered his wife and two other women before killing himself. The Oregonian reports county commissioners will name a special committee to review employment practices. The county has been sued for allegedly not taking action during prior complaints of misconduct by Grand. Also caught on camera, some serious drama on Lake Erie as four people are pulled alive from a small plane that crashed that crash landed short of an airfield in Ohio. This cell phone video was taken by a person on a ferry. The captain rushed over after seeing the plane skip across the water. Everyone survived the crash and amazingly, no one was seriously hurt. Rod is here now with a look at our forecast, and um, this is something we've been waiting for for, what, six months? Well, some people love it. Some people don't. Tomorrow will be, uh, <laughs> well, we, no matter how you stack it, we've been waiting, <laughs> we've been waiting for, this for this to come, though you are correct, Hot sir. weather. Here's Joe Smith. All right, have yourself a great weekend. Stay cool. Temperatures climb into the 90s for the third day in a row. It's taking a toll on people without air conditioning, including drivers stranded on the side of the road. That's the top story from the night team. We have live team coverage. Meteorologist Rod Hill has the details on a heat advisory. But first, how the hot weather has a way of stranding drivers. News Channel 8's Catherine Cook rode along with ODOT's incident response team, whose job is coming to their rescue. Catherine? Joe. They can be a lifesaver. Thank you, Catherine. Summer is a busy time for events throughout Portland, but the heat is taking a toll on the crowds. News Channel 8's Randy Neves found lots of people trying to stay ahead of the heat today, using everything from ice and shade to man-made mist. News Channel 8. And another hot day on the way tomorrow. The Portland area has been and will be under a smog advisory. So far, though, the air quality is listed as good. Today was day three of 90 degree heat, and it looks like we can expect more tomorrow. Meteorologist Rod Hill is in the first alert storm center with a breakdown on those temperatures. Rod. The wildfire season has flared up tonight in Clark County. Crews right now are working to gain control of a fire on Larch Mountain near a state prison. The hot, dry conditions and high winds are complicating that effort. As Wayne Haverly explains now, the fire is actually highlighting the need for the prison because the inmates are also trained firefighters. News Channel 8. At latest check, the Hilltop fire has burned about 70 acres and is only about 10% contained. Fire investigators would like to hear from anyone with information about what may have sparked that fire. Beyond the Northwest tonight, eight people are dead and a dozen others hurt after a truck at an off-road race lost control and slammed into a crowd of spectators. This newly released home video shows just how close the crowd was to the course before the crash. It happened last night about 100 miles northeast of Los Angeles. Witnesses say the driver lost control after taking a jump at high speed, then rolled sideways into the crowd. The driver actually had to run from the scene after the crowd turned on him. He does not face charges. And then the westerlies kick in Tuesday afternoon. So what you're saying is at the end of the week, fall kicks in. <laughs> that's don't, what it sounds don't like. Don't do that to me, Joe. Well, don't do that. That's what I heard. <laughs> All right. Thank you. 
And tonight's entertainment buzz, a big thrill for actor Vince Vaughn and his mom. They went skydiving with the U.S. Army's Golden Knights at the 52nd Annual Chicago Air and Water Show. This is video of the 40-year-old yesterday strapped to a member of the skydiving stunt team after jumping from more than 12,000 feet. Vaughn was apparently queasy as the plane reached altitude, but had a big smile on his face when he landed. His mom landed safely moments later. It was the first jump for both.